I'm with Teresa. I'm your host, Teresa, and tonight I am interviewing on the red carpet for the SAG After Red Carpet event. Tonight we are going to be speaking with local talent, but we're also going to be speaking with actors who are in films that have received Golden Globes and who have been nominated for the Academy Awards. It's going to be an exciting night. Are you ready to join me on the red carpet? Okay, let's go. Well, it is my delight to introduce you to the president of the Dallas SAG after chapter, Rip Anderson. Hi, how are you? Hi, Rip. Welcome to the program. It's Thanks such a delight to have you. And uh, first thing I want to ask you is tell us a little bit more about your role as the president of SAG after. Well, I serve as the local president for Dallas Fort Worth uh, for SAG and after. I'm the, the you know elected by the local members, and uh, we represent roughly 1,500 members in our local, which is North Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Um, throughout the state, we've got about 2,500 members. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. And you enjoyed that role? I enjoyed it a great deal, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, could you share with our viewers uh, a little bit about the efforts that SAG AFTRA is making to bring in more media production in the state of Texas? Sure. You know, we work uh, very closely with uh, the Texas Motion Picture Alliance, TXMPA, which is an organization of industry professionals that uh, work to lobby. Uh, the state legislature to try to bring as, as much in terms of incentives here to attract outside production. But also, you know, primarily we work towards setting and maintaining professional standards for performers here so that uh, people can make a living as an actor here outside of New York or L.A. and, and uh, enjoy all the benefits of being able to work and, you know, not have to move anywhere else. So, you know, there's a lot of different things about it. That's great news. Well, is there anything the general public can do to help bring in more production to the state of Texas? Sure, certainly. Uh, you know, a lot of people may be aware of many of the states around the country that have film incentive programs that uh, are designed to give tax breaks to large budget productions that come to town. Uh, you know, the states with the most aggressive tax breaks tend to get the most work. New Mexico, uh, Atlanta, uh, these, are, these are two places that are, are bustling with production. We've done a pretty good job holding our own. Uh, we've had a lot of really good production. There's uh, a series that I worked on this past year called American Crime, shooting down in Austin that was uh, created by John Ridley, who won the Academy Award for writing 12 Years a Slave. And uh, that was a real boon for Texas to get that series here. And they used a lot of Texas talent, a lot of local actors in, in some really significant roles. So I think we're growing. We're, we're, uh, we're getting bigger and bigger. So. That is wonderful. Uh, so, can you share what role you're playing in American Crime? Yes, I played uh, Detective Chuck Palmer. The, uh, the series revolves around a crime that takes place in Modesto, California, that uh, I wind up investigating. Um, and it's, the, the series itself is going to be designed along the lines of True Detective, where they have one crime throughout the season, and they'll kind of follow that crime, and then the next season it'll be a different crime, and different characters. But I'm sort of the lead investigator. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, I'll have to be watching for sure. that. Do Let's you know it. when it's going to start airing? Yes, it'll start airing uh, March 5th on ABC. It's Thursday night right after Scandal. I think it'll be 9 o'clock Central. Okay, well, congratulations on yeah. that. Uh, well, actually, how about some of your past projects? Can you share some of your past projects that you've been in? Uh, the show that I always bring up that most people remember is one we shot here that was on PBS called Wishbone, which was a show that introduced kids to classic literature, and it had a Jack Russell Terrier was sort of the star. We had these flashback scenes to these, you know, in his imagination to, you know, scenes from classic books, and it was a really popular show that's still running on PBS. I did uh, about a 30 episodes of that show. And I've done you know, a few hundred commercials and corporate videos, and uh, uh, of course, I all the other shows that were local. I did uh, uh, what was Prison Break and uh, Dallas and you know Chase and name it. Those are the shows that came through. I've been on. Well, you're very active, and and, right. and yet you can manage to uh, be the president of the Dallas chapter too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it works hand in hand. Well, great. Well, I have one final question for sure. you. Sure. You're involved in many things, mm -hmm. but what is your greatest passion in life, and why? 
my greatest passion in life is uh, are my two kids and my wife. I mean, my family. Uh, you know, I, I uh, waited until later in life to get married, and, and now I kind of wish I'd started a little earlier, but <laughs> I have so much fun with my kids. I've got a six-year-old and a daughter who's just turned 18 who's going to be graduating, but uh, that's, where, that's where I have my most fun. And that's where it should be. Yeah. It's been a delight interviewing you. Thank, you. thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Joining me now is Miss Libby Villari. 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 And she is a TV and film actor, and she has a role in the film Boyhood. And Boyhood has already taken two Golden Globes, correct? Four. Oh, four Golden Globes. Great. Four Golden Globes, and it's up nominated for an award. Absolutely. Well, tonight is uh, the SAG Awards, and so we're nominated for, I think, four. I think that's right. Uh, Best Picture is what we really hope to get, but also um, Best Ensemble is uh, up for grabs tonight. And uh, Patricia Arquette, uh, who plays my daughter, she is up for Best Supporting Actress, and Ethan Hawke is up for Best um, Supporting Actor. So, fingers crossed. Great, great. Uh, well, congratulations. I mean, thanks. already the awards that have been given to it and all the recognition that's oh, been given to it. It's been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It, You know, it's wonderful for me, but um, it's especially wonderful for Texas film industry, yes, you know, for yes. everybody involved. And the fact that it took 12 years to mm -hmm. film it, it's made history. So, I don't think anybody can ignore it for yeah. it, it, any length of time, you know, it's it's a huge deal. In fact, it is the most critically acclaimed film since Godfather 30 years ago. Oh, wow. So that's pretty neat. That yeah. is a great accomplishment. So was that filmed in Texas, a part of it filmed in Texas? All of it was filmed in Texas. All of it was filmed in Texas, awesome. And every actor in it is a Texan, with the exception of Patricia Arquette. Go Texas! Yay, yeah. yay. I'm glad to hear that. I did not know that. Huh? So what were some of the locations in Texas that it was shot at? Well, I shot in Austin. Austin. Or in the outskirts of Austin, and um, you know they used a very famous place that I can't think of the name of it, where the falls were, where they go swimming, and uh, so most of it was in that area in Bastrop County, which is the next county over, which is where Rick Linklater lives, the director of the film. Um, so it, you know it has lovely images of Texas too. If you don't know what Texas looks like, watch the movie and you will afterwards, right? Nice, nice. Well, uh, now this film is unique in that it was shot over a period of 12 years right. to show real time of a young boy's journey from uh, first grade to 12. First grade to 12. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that that took a lot of patience on everyone's part because as that young boy was aging, so was everyone else, the writer, the director, Oh, the absolutely. <laughs> and you know... Um, you don't know when you're hiring a six-year-old kid to make a 12-year movie what if that's going to work out, you know? So Rick was really blessed with luck and a, and a really true, clear vision. And um, the boy had never acted before, and he's just phenomenal in the piece. And um, I don't know about patience. We were always looking forward to the next time we were going to shoot as actors, you know. Um, I'm in the beginning, in the middle, and the end. So I was the first year, and maybe the fourth year, and then the twelfth year. So, but you see everybody, of course, age, and they're not played by some other actor, as it would be the case if it was, you know, being shot over a six-month period of time. Or so it's never been done, and it's just phenomenal to see it unfold. The, all of their lives, not just the boys, but everyone's lives, change and they look we all look so different at the end you know um i look younger than i was at the beginning <laughs> i actually do um i have i was a, a survivor of breast cancer and that was i was just pulling through the worst of that when i began to shoot the movie and um and also I, there was a tremendous amount of stress um in regards to my granddaughter and so um yeah i look younger and, but the kids, you know, you don't have anything in the whole movie that you would typically see about time going by. There's no calendars, there's no the month of or the year of. Or, it just unfolds naturally. And you watch this kid grow up like he was a member of your family, mm -hmm. practically. 
So I, I can't wait for you to see it. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Oh, yes. Well, we welcome everybody. And congratulations on your conquering your battle. I know that's a difficult time. Oh, I'm well. You're yeah, well. That's well. wonderful. Yeah. And I just actually wanted to mention that uh, the videographer tonight is has a television, co uh, television show called Diagnosed TV. And it's all inspirational it's stories right. about cancer survivors, and they're helping people that are going through that battle. So, well, call me <laughs> because I'm a I'm a great example of someone who just didn't. It, I wouldn't give it the time of day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look very vibrant, very healthy, and Thank so you. you'd mentioned this has really never been done before with a baby, and so. I wonder what, how, how the writer even thought about that, how that even came to him. He was a father, first of all. Uh, Lorelai, his daughter, was probably in second grade when we started shooting, and um, she was his first child. And he wanted, I, I think he wanted to maybe document her growing up years to some extent, you know? And as a parent, he was he had all kinds of questions. What's gonna happen next? What's gonna be part of our future? I think that's where the germ of the of the idea came from. And uh, and he sort of based it on his childhood, uh, the events that happened. Um, and so I think that's where it came from, but there was no script. There was never a script. Never a script. No. Wow. So <laughs> it's his concept. 150%, but he collaborated and hired actors, collaborated with and hired actors that um, that are really good at improv, and um, my audition was a very lengthy improv with Ethan Hawke. That was my audition. He gave us a premise, and he said, okay, go. And that's pretty much how we shot the film. Uh, I can't speak for the times that I wasn't there, but when I was shooting, it was a matter of him letting me know, this is what's going to happen in this scene, now you make it happen with your words. And so that was a pretty amazing thing. It surely yeah. is. To, and the trust that he had in us, I guess, to be able to pull that off, you know. That's really groundbreaking. This movie is really groundbreaking. <laughs> so I'm ways. so excited. I can't wait to see if you get that award, the Academy Award. I yeah. can't wait to see that. So after the audience goes and sees this film, what do you hope that they walk away with? Um, I hope they walk away realizing that they've never seen anything like that before and they may never see anything like that again. Uh, it was a perfect storm that brought it all together and made it happen over a period of actually 13 years, really. Um, and I know that they'll walk out of there saying, thinking about their own life, about their own journey, about their own childhood from their school years and from when they were in high school, and how hard it is to be a teenager, and then what their hopes for the future were. Because, you know, that day of graduation, that day of high school graduation, is to me, when I watch people I love and know well go through that ceremony. I just, I'm always tearful and and so thrilled for their futures, you know, for, what, for the journey that they have in front of them. And I think that's what they'll come away remembering for themselves. Great, you know. great. Well, would you like to share a little bit of your past projects that you've been in? Well, I, actually, I have a couple of films that are going to be out fairly soon. One of them is called Windsor. It's a Texas story about a small town. Um, it has a lovely heart, and um, Occupy Texas, which uh, was a real collaborative effort locally and made by some New York filmmakers that are from Texas. So those will be coming out, and you may know me from, um, if you were a fan of Friday Night Lights uh, NBC, the NBC series for five years, I played the mayor, Mayor Rodell. She was not everyone's favorite character. <laughs> um, she was a little crass. But uh, she was a lot of fun, and oh, what a wonderful show that was. We're so proud of that show. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can see it now on Netflix. And, you know, the New York Times said that it's the best television ever made. 
Now, I don't know about that, but um, I'm awfully proud of our work there. It, it too seemed to be groundbreaking. If you're not familiar with it, it has really interesting camera work. There are cameras all over the place. So as an actor, you never know whether there's a camera on you or not. So you are always in character, you know. And, um, and then I made tons of movies. You can look me up on imdb.com. Uh, Valari is V and Victor, I-L-L-A-R-I. And you can see my 35-year career, which has all been in Texas, I have to tell you. Um, we like that. I have made like one that. film in Oklahoma uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was It's a Russian uh-huh. film. And, um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm, I've shot it here. Nice. I'm not a Texan, but I got here as soon as I could. <laughs> delighted to have you and you, so you know much. what we've been delighted to have you on my program it's so uh, I'm just so grateful that you stopped by and gave us this opportunity to interview you oh thanks for wish you me. all the best I'm going to be watching mm-hmm. for that award yes that's right we, we want to win best picture <laughs> tonight and on February 24th okay bye bye well joining me now is actor Reese McCormick welcome Reese thanks for having me it's so great to have you here tonight, and you're hosting the event tonight, is that correct? That's right, but I don't seem to have any authority because I can't make people be quiet for your interviews. <laughs> so we'll have to talk loud. Yeah, we'll have to talk loud. <laughs> well, share with our viewers why, what the term sag after means and why it's so important. Well, um, the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, S-A-G, um, merged with the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. So at one time, it was a film or a video issue. But now, all performers, weathermen, stunt performers, music video dancers, country singers, actors, were all members of the same performers union. And, um, and that, that's pretty significant. Here in Texas, we have always felt like we were together, but, uh, but it was quite something, I think, getting New York and Los Angeles to, to agree to it. But, you know, it was a long, hard battle. We have merged. The awards that we're celebrating tonight are still called the SAG Awards because the Screen Actors Guild is honoring its own. Mm-hmm. Now, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Even country music singers, it just covers everyone. Weathermen, everybody. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Well, tell me, what do you like most about hosting these events? Um, I think because it's a time to celebrate our, um, our unique position having this award ceremony. This is the only award ceremony in our industry that is actors voting for actors. You won't see any awards tonight for uh, sound design or screenplays. You will only see performances being awarded. And we voted on our brothers and sisters, you know. So um, I'm hoping to win the ballot because there's a big prize. (laughs) Yay! Good for you. Good for you. So can you tell us who you think some of the winners may be? Well, I saw, when I saw Eddie Redmayne perform uh, the role of Stephen Hawking which was a biopic about, you know, it's always harder, I think, when you're doing a story about a person that we all know. But for him as a young actor to be able to capture what he did in that chair, I mean, he he had, he created an entire world in that chair. And as much as I love Michael Keaton and I adore the work that he's done, and for me, he will only be the ever, he will only be the only Batman ever that I will ever feel like was a fabulous Batman. Um, I love Michael Keaton, but I voted for Eddie Redmayne because that huge, I just couldn't imagine how, how difficult it must have been mentally and physically to twist his body like that and his mind and his voice for that role. It's amazing. There's a lot of great performances. Well, Reese, could you share with us uh, what you think about the opportunity for female actors that are over 40? Is the opportunities greater now than they used to be, or what's your feelings on that? I I am a huge advocate of women in um, in general, um, and I was I'm the president elect of Women in Film Dallas, the Dallas chapter oh, nice. of the national organization. So I've really got that right here, you know, in the front of my mind. Uh, there are three pillars in our organization: um, education, and empowerment and promotion. And we're focusing on empowerment um, to the degree, to 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 a, to a great degree, dealing with um, young 
younger women. I know you asked about women over 40, but I'm putting my emphasis on, I'm in legacy mode, and a lot of the women and women in film really are excited about the young girls that are coming up, because this industry is opening up for women. Um, yes, it is. I teach uh, film, I teach creative process to filmmakers, and for every 10 boys in my class, I've got one girl. And, uh, and when I recruit for KD Conservatory, which is where I teach, um, I'm always telling the girls, this is your time. Um, and so we're about empowering uh, all women, uh, yes. and, you know, and you, if you need us, yes. give us a call. <laughs> um, and it's not, I mean, we have men as members, but I mean, men, men are set, men, right. uh, you know, uh, but it's, it's the women that need, um, need to boost. But it seems like I've seen a lot more television shows with stronger women roles and older women I think in the roles. because you're seeing more women writers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Producers, more women directors, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm I'm glad. You know, I, I think it takes all of us, men, women, and children. It That's takes right. everyone. And when I get to be over forty, I'm going to want support. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Yeah, that was about fifteen years ago. <laughs> Uh, well, I tell you what, uh, Reese, it's been a delight speaking with you. Thank and you so but much. I know you've also been involved in a lot of other things. So if you want to share some of your past projects or a oh, current project um, that you're on. Yes, this year I had the good fortune of working on a fabulous Texas film, which just got distribution. The executive producer's here tonight. The film is called Flutter. It was a mostly Texas cast. It was shot in Texas by a Texas director, written by a Texan. And the executive producer is here tonight. I don't know if you've spoken with Glenn Morshower. But, oh, um, no, but he's on my list. Okay, fabulous. Send we'll him this way. Talk about it. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Reese. All right. Good night. Love you. Mr. John Strange with me. Welcome, John. Thank you. It's so great to have you. And uh, now, John, you're a professional photographer, and you have your own company. Is that correct? That's right. And that's Selig Polyscope Photography and more. <laughs> Actually, it's Selig Polyscope Company. We are the reestablishment of a 118-year-old uh, film company that was originally founded in 1896 in Chicago, Illinois, by Colonel William Selig. Um, in the mid 2000s, we started. My, my business partner does a lot of stuff for CNN and, and other stations, and he was researching a book for them. And he came across the Silly Polyscope Company, and he called me at two o'clock in the morning. And goes, "Hey, I found the company name we've been talking. We've been wanting to do a film company. This is the name. Listen to this." He told me about the, the, the history. They were the first studio to move to, El to, to Los Angeles in, in the Hollywood area. Uh, they did the first Wizard of Oz, the first, uh, uh, the first newsreels. There's so many, so many firsts that this guy did. He was the first to use Native Americans as, to play Indians in his films. Wow. You know, he, um, Tom Mix and Fatty Arbuckle got their start with this company. Wow, that's amazing. So it was like. We're both history nuts, so this was just perfect. It was it was a great company name. Um, so we spent the money and researched to make sure everybody was happy with that. It were an outstanding debts. We were going to step on. Um, the company had gone out of business in around 1926. And we wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything outstanding. The lawyer said, "Okay, everything's great." So in 2008, we reestablished. In 2000. Ten, we started doing the Selig Film News, where we review films and, and, and do interviews. In 2012, we added my photography, and we rolled my photography into it, which is Selig Images. Okay. And now we do um, we also do web development, which includes um, social media marketing and all that sort of things. We work with a lot of film festivals, helping them with logistics. We do red carpet interviews. We do red carpet photography. Um, the photography side, we do events like the Boys and Girls Club, and juvenile diabetes, and companies like organizations like that. We do uh, headshots. We do um, pretty much anything that anybody can think of. We're willing to do it. Wow. Well, you're you're a very busy guy. <laughs> you got your hands in a lot of things. Well, uh, there was one question I wanted to ask you. Um, I hear a lot of people call you Doc, and so that's a nickname. How in the world did you get that nickname? Well, there's two there's two answers to that. One is when I was growing up, I loved the Doc Strange comics. And Doctor Strange was the coolest superhero ever. <laughs> 
and the other thing is that I'm a bit of a know-it-all, and I admit it. And so it just kind of it just kind of fit. So okay. so it's took. Yes. It took. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that for me. Now, how many years have you been working the Dallas SAG AFTRA red carpet? This is my fifth year to do the photography, and it's our third year to do the video interviews. Oh, nice. nice. Isn't it nice to be interviewed for a change? <laughs> Instead Honestly, of doing it's, the interviews? It's, this is frightening. <laughs> You'd rather be on the other side of the camera, huh? Or, well, I work or doing the interviews. Okay. Okay. Well, I love it. I love to interview people. Um, what do you like most about the Dallas uh, SAG-AFTRA red carpet? A lot of great people. Um, it's, it's a chance for me to see a lot of the actors that I only see. You know, they may not make it to the film festival because of the, you know, they don't have a film in the festival, but they come here to to celebrate, you know, the awards and everything. So I get, there's, you know, a lot of them I get to see, and, you know, just the camaraderie, because I also work on film sets. I, I do uh, set photography, and I work as extras, and all sorts of things like that, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, nice, nice. Well, uh, I did notice on your website that you have a page for faith-based films. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us more about that. Well, that's a side that we're, we're really just getting into in the last year. Um, we want to help the faith-based films get a, a wider audience um, to help them help promote them to um, make sure that everybody knows that they're out there because unfortunately they don't always have enough marketing money so anything we can do to help promote them is you know something we want to do great great and that's wonderful I'm really happy to hear that because we've had so many great faith-based films or family friendly films in 2014 mm -hmm. and you know Hollywood's taken notice and I believe we're going to have a lot more coming out in 2015 and there's a lot more people wanting to get on board with that you know because now they see it's marketable exactly you know? and that's been part of that's been part of the challenge I agree you know, I've, we, we've done, we've worked with several different ones over the years. Um, there are a lot of great actors out there that, that, that specialize in them now, and, and I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they've turned their, their attention more to the, the scripts that are more faith-based, and it's, you know, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah I, well, I think so. <laughs> you know, family-friendly, positive entertainment exactly. and everything. Uh, it's real, you can leave feeling like you're taking something with you, some hope with you, some encouragement with you, and we all know our, our world needs that, you know? So, awesome. Well, I really celebrate all that you're doing, and this is how I met you, is coming up here and grabbing some interviews, and I wasn't able to interview you last year, so this year we made it happen, so uh, share with our viewers how they can um, contact you and find out more about your services. Well, if you need to reach me, you can reach me at photo at seligpolyscope.com. That's S-E-L-I-G-P-O-L-Y-S-C-O-P-E dot com. On the web, we're at SelecPolyscope.com or SelecFilmNews.com or SelecImages.com. All right. Well, it's been a delight interviewing you, and awesome. you did very well. <laughs> so it's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Wow, what a great night we have had tonight at the SAG After Red Carpet. I enjoyed interviewing all the wonderful talent and great guests, and I'm so thankful and grateful that they came by and spent a little time with me tonight. And I want to thank Trish Avery and all the board members and all the committee of the SAG after a Dallas chapter for allowing me this great opportunity. Who knows, you may see me here again next year. We were here last year, and maybe we will be here in 2016. But it's been a great time, and I hope you've enjoyed your time on the red carpet with me. Well, as they say in the industry, that's a wrap. God bless you.